Welcome back everyone. WDEF News 12 is celebrating our 70th anniversary on the air at the end of the month. WDEF was Chattanooga's first television station. For generations, viewers only knew two names for the news. Walter Cronkite in Washington and Mort Lloyd here in Chattanooga. The story took a tragic twist for the newsman, but it was a happy ending. Here's our profile of Mort Lloyd from 20 years ago. Dozens of stolen cars discovered near Chattanooga will have an exclusive film report. Doug Hollander has the weather forecast for the tri-state area. Bill Smith is at the sports desk. And at 6.30, the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Thank you. Mort Lloyd and Walter Cronkite. Good evening from Paris. Tonight, this broadcast originates from outside the United States for the first time. People say Mort Lloyd was the Walter Cronkite of Chattanooga, but he was the guy. I mean, he had, he had the look, uh, he had the voice, you know, this voice of God that would come out of the television every day. And, uh, and Mort was just, he was news. Mort was at TB12 from the beginning in 1954. He was younger, thinner, and even had some hair back then. But soon enough, he took a bold step that shook up company president Carter Parham. But I do know that he was a, a little upset when Mort Lloyd shaved his head. Well, he was so like, like his, his son. He didn't like that fall <laughs> when he came up there. And so, and of course, when, when Mort shaved his head, it wasn't the thing to do. That it was a little bit unusual. But I can still... probably answer that question better than anybody. <laughs> well, with a receding hairline, there's only so far it can go. And you think, you know, why am I fooling with this? This is crazy. I love it. I think it fits who I am. It certainly fit who my father was. And uh, it's, uh, it's comfortable. Mort switched stations in 1958, but returned for the glory days of the red-coated professionals in 1970 with close friend John Gray. He wrote a poem to, that would sort of lead into John Gray's newscast each evening. And I know so many people, uh, well, they commented on it. They said, well, what's Mort going to talk about you tonight? What, what's, he, what's he going to say? Rain, sleet, and snow may not stop the mailman, but it has been something less than desirable for the local weatherman. John Gray may be, just may be, brave enough to face you tonight at the weather board. But at the peak of his popularity, he made a surprise decision. We were listening to the radio, and we weren't really happy with the voice of who we felt was a represent, representative in Washington. And Mort said, that did it. I'm going to run for Congress. And I said, yes, you are. Another passion of Mort's was aviation. In August of 1974, Mort was flying his small plane when the propeller cracked. The plane went down in a field near Manchester, killing the honored newsman. Democrats chose his wife, Marilyn, to replace him on the ballot. Three months later, the voters sent Marilyn to Washington, where she served for 20 years. But he was known all over this district as a man of compassion, a man that cared about them, and someone that they felt presented the news honorably in a dignified manner. And life can change. In one minute you're on the top of the world, you're running for Congress, and the next day you're dead. It's one of those reality checks that, hey, live today as best you can because, you know, who knows if you're going to make it to tomorrow. Since we aired that story 20 years ago, Marilyn Lloyd has since passed. But his son Morty continues Mort's legacy. He's the mayor of College Dale. He's a pilot just like his old man.